In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to add forecast trend lines to your line charts in Power BI. I'm going to show you how to do it step by step so you can follow along if you want. And I'm also going to show you how to tune and tweak your forecast to your liking. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let me show you how easy it is to do in Power BI Desktop. So let me show you this demo that I prepared for you today. This is the calculation groups PBIX file that I used to demonstrate how to create calculation groups in Power BI. If you're interested in how to do that, I made a separate video on it. But we'll reuse the same data set because it has some information that I want. If you don't want to watch that video, I want to just give you a quick overview of what the data set contains. If we go to the model view, you'll see that we have a calendar table which has our um, date stuff. This is for time intelligence. We have the orders table which has some information about uh, sales, so things like the um, the products, how many were ordered, and how much for, and at what point in time they were purchased. And with the time intelligence, the calendar, and the orders, we are able to create some measures that are pretty important. So we have the ability to get the cost, the profit, and sales based on the data that we have. But for now, we'll focus on the measure sales. So let's say for our scenario, we want to see how the sales will look like for the next week, for the next couple of weeks. So what we'll do, we'll have to create a new page. So we have a new page here. We'll put the dates and the sales onto a line chart here. And from here, we it, it has data since uh, back in March last year. So maybe we'll just tone that down a little bit. So let's say in the last six months instead. So that will give us a better sample rate. It's not too much. And from here, to add a forecast line, all you need to do is you need to go to analytics. You'll see under here, forecasts, you'll just need to click add. And you'll see that Power BI already starts to add some uh, default numbers for you to start with. And now from here, you can start tweaking it to make it uh, truly your own kind of forecast. So if you focus our view on the analytics pane here for the forecast, we have some options here to customize our forecast line. And let me explain them to you one by one. Forecast length controls how far in the future you want to draw your forecast line for. So at the moment, we have uh, 10 points here, which means that because our, our visual is a day, so each point is a day, we are basically saying, give me a forecast for the next 10 days, right? So we can, if we want to make that forecast even longer, uh, let's say we want for two weeks, so we want to do maybe 14 instead for the next two weeks. If you will let me, if you hit apply, so you see that now grows. Ignore last point moves your prediction on top of the actuals. So it, it overlays it on top of your actuals. So you're able to kind of compare and contrast how your predictions are compared to what the actual results are. Um, and how far back it goes is based on the points you put here. So again, because points mean days. So if we say, I want to see how the forecast was for the past, for the last seven days. So if we change this to seven, you'll see that the um, prediction goes back seven points and you'll see that the prediction line on top of the actuals. The confidence interval controls how big your upper bound and the lower bound is of your forecast trend. So you see um, by the gray area on top of your forecast lines. So it means how likely the actuals will be within these bounds. Uh, that's the margin of error that your forecast would be. The lower the confidence in term intervals, the smaller these bounds will be. So if we set this to 75%, for example, 
you'll see that the bounds also change to become a little bit smaller. The seasonality allows you to incorporate trends and sort of seasonal factors to your forecasting line. So for example, you would use this um, when you have a full cycle of season in your data. So typically for sales, you would do a year of sales. So you would know when your peak will be. Maybe you will have a peak in December or maybe you will have a drought of sales in June. So a full cycle of that, where you have the set of your highs and lows, um, will typically be a year, but that can be different depending on what sector or what you're using the data for. So in our scenario, if we wanted to do one year's worth, we need to put 365 points here because each point is a day. However, as you notice, because we don't have a full set of years data, we should not be using the seasonality that way because the seasonality works based on sample data, right? So it will sample based on uh, historical, uh, based on historical data. In order to use the seasonality effectively, it's actually recommended to you have your chart to have four times the data of what you're using as your seasonality. So that gives the Power BI visual the ability to sample enough seasons to create some more um, accurate forecasts. So in our case with our sales, maybe we can do year, but for sure we can do month because we have the past six months. So in this case, uh, we want to put 31 here or maybe 30, it doesn't really matter. So now that will, if I hit apply, you'll see that the kind of predictions change based on that seasonality. So the season, which is every month. And that's really it for this video. I hope it helped you understand how easy it is to start using forecast lines in Power BI Desktop. Leave a like on this video if it helped you. It's the best way to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. Get in touch using the social media links that I included in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching, guys. See you again on the next one.